Today I'm going to talk to you about harder to cite sources. Now you saw the research model, we covered this to some extent. You begin the site, this documenting your research as you hit the investigation phase um, and you carry it on basically through all the way through to where you're writing up your, your assignment, your paper. I mentioned the last time I saw you that this was not a great article, but I was able to use it to compile a really solid list of keywords. The question I have for your teacher is, should you include an article like this in your work cited? And that is really for your individual teacher to answer. This is the online writing lab at Purdue University, and we use in grades 9 through 10, 11, sorry, the MLA, which is, stands for the Modern Language Association Guide for, um, write, for Citation and for Writing Research Papers. So that is the guide you use, and the OWL, the Online Writing Lab at Purdue University, has an excellent online resource, which we highly recommend. Um, there are some other resources that we recommend. Under Citing on the library website, you'll find the Bibliography Quick Guide. You'll also find the online CRAP test, which is an excellent resource. If you're not sure about a, res a resource, you can just walk through those, a series of questions that will help you determine whether you find it help, whether it's useful or not for you, and you should cite it or use it. And also there is a works cited exemplar, and that is really all the hard to, hard to cite questions I've received over the last couple of years, and we've been compiling those into a big, giant works cited. So let's start with PDFs. And uh, here is an example of a PDF that is hard to cite. When you do what you guys usually do, which is to copy the URL, drop it into a website, and click cite it, it ends up giving, EasyBib will end up giving you um, this information. And it turns out that every single one of those pieces of information is incorrect. Um, so this is really your best resource when it comes to citing a PDF, is to look at the URL. Um, and so you go to that root URL, so the home page of whatever it is that, that this website is attached to or posted on, and this will bring you to the home page of the National Security Law Journal in this case. And um, that is from George Mason University, the School of Law. And then when we look at our document, you can see the title is there, the page number is there, the author is there, but what doesn't seem to be listed is the volume and issue number, but it is listed in the URL. So now when we look at EasyBib, we can start populating all of those fields using the information that we've been able to procure. And here's what our citation looks like. Now, uh, we're going to talk about NPR for a little bit. And you'll notice that there is listen to the story as one of the options you have, and there is also sort of, it says transcript, um, it's the web content for that uh, audio piece. And when we go into EasyBib under all 59 options, there is a television slash radio option. That's what you're going to choose. And when we look at our website, we have an awful lot of information here. We have title, we have the date of online publication, we have the host and correspondent. We have the name of the program, we have uh, the roles of both of the people who are given credit for this. So that's a lot of information, it's pretty comprehensive, but we are going to have to manipulate this citation just a wee bit. So it is a full source um, because it includes both the web content and the audio file. Um, the contributor part is what we are going to have to play with because we have a host and a reporter but neither a writer, director, or a producer. And you could probably omit that information, but I tend to want to make it accurate. So we're probably going to bend the rules just a wee bit just to make sure that we are accurate in our citation. So you can enter all the parts as, as needed. And then when you are done, there's an advanced edit at the top of the screen. And that's what we're going to click on. And once we do that, we're going to go in here and we're going to look at what they've got and see where it says Tom Bowman producer and Renee Montaigne host. Those aren't quite accurate and they're not exactly in the right space. So we are switching it up a little bit. We're going to put Renee first, we're going to put Tom second, we're going to give Renee the credit for being a host and we're going to give Tom the credit for being a reporter and we are all done and then we have a citation that looks like this. 
All right, here's YouTube. And this is the YouTube channel of President Obama 3. He has 1,100 subscribers. He's had a few million views. That's impressive. He joined in September of 2009. That is not President Obama. So here's the thing. This is the same clip featuring the same journal or same correspondent um, on Meet the Press on the same day. The second clip, it's not from NBC, whereas in the first clip it's from NBC. So the idea is to use the original source, not the bootlegger source. Most media outlets do have their own YouTube channel and they post that content online, so go to the original source. We're going to have the same thing with YouTube um, for producer and writer. We will change those. Um, one thing that's important to note is that uh, there are no abbreviations. So when it says site or program title, where it says NBC, you're going to have to figure out what that, what that stands for. So here's the citation, but we're not going to stick with that. We're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to go to the edit, and we are going to take out the writer credit for Tom Brokaw because he's already in the title. So we're just going to settle on having Tom Brokaw on ISIS, give him credit there, and then we're going to make the producer Chuck Todd. Here's an interview. This is an interview with Hillary Clinton that was done in Kabul, Afghanistan, and it was done at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. Make sure that you choose the correct tab. This is really a universal problem we're seeing in EasyBib is that kids don't look at those tabs there, those grade in tabs. They don't look like they're real. They're a little bit faint. Um, it's critical with books. It's critical with newspapers and it's critical here. So it is from a website. And the other thing I want to highlight here is that the United States is a corporate author. Another corporate author you will use and run into very often is the Associated Press. And here is your citation. There is one thing I would change here, and that is to take out the URL. So I will click the edit, and I will go to advanced edit, and I remove that, and I update my citation, and now I have a complete citation. And we now have the BBC. This is a television program on BBC One. You'll see down at the bottom under credits, it has writer and pr producer and director, Gareth Jones. So we're going to give him credit for production. The other thing we're going to do is BBC. Remember, there's no abbreviation, so it's a British Broadcasting Company. And where it says Display URL, you can save yourself the aggravation we just had with the Hillary Clinton interview, and you can click the space where it says No Display URL. And there's your citation. Now, I promised that I would give you a screen with all of the abbreviations for many of the news outlets. And if you have any other suggestions for me to add to this list, then we will be happy to do that.